Today I'm gonna recap Oklahoma destroying Texas Tech and all that's coming up after the bumper. What do you mean you don't subscribe to my son's YouTube channel? Mama, no! Just snap the damn ball, RJ. What's up, Ken Folk? It's RJ Young. I am not on a step mill. Consider hitting the like and subscribe button because I upload a video every single day. It's always OU related, college football related, sports related. We have a good time. And today I want to talk about Oklahoma dismantling Texas Tech. I mean, ridiculous yardage put up by the offense and outstanding play by the defense. I understand that Jalen Hurts is once again going to get all of the headlines. Man went, what was it, 16 to 23, 413 yards, three TDs and a pick. The pick, he threw behind Nick Basquin. Nick Basquin tried to make a play on the ball, tipped it, fell into a Red Raiders hands, and that was their takeaway and their turnover. But outside of that, we're talking about another day where he had nearly 500 yards of offense. He had nine carries for 70 yards with a touchdown. Just superlative. 254.7 passer rating. He has been phenomenal as a passer, and he really hasn't even peaked. As a matter of fact, fortunate enough to be in a position where I can talk to some NFL scouts about what they see. And the thing that you take away from Jalen Hurts is he's gotten better with each game. From the Houston game to South Dakota to UCLA and now into Big 12 play, you can see him developing in Lincoln Riley's scheme. You can see that Lincoln Riley is getting a better feel for what Hurts can run and how he can run it. And you were able to see Charleston Rambo and C.D. Lamb get in on the action early and often. By the end of the first half, both of those guys had 100 yard receiving performances. CD had an outstanding game, seven catches, 185 yards, three tutties, call him C Tutty. See what I did there. They're talking about another game where they had over 600 yards of offense. They were just dynamic moving the football. We're looking at, what is this? 11.1 yards per play, per play. They're still averaging better than a first down per play. It feels like Kennedy Brooks is okay after he took that dirty hit. I understand that there's a lot of folks that have some issues and some feelings about that because it was dirty. Get more about what Lincoln Riley has to say about it. If anything, he may not know anything there is. It might not be that big a deal. Also, Trajan Bridges getting in to play some defensive football. After a week of us talking about it, it being a thing, Riley saying it's not that big a deal. Well, up 48-13, you saw Trajan Bridges go into the game. You saw him play nickel and you saw... He's getting used to this idea of, hey, look, I know exactly where I'm supposed to go and how I'm supposed to execute as a wide receiver to. I don't know where I'm going to be going, but I do know what my responsibilities are supposed to be as a defensive player. He had an egregious holding penalty. It looked like a horse collar due to the ground. He's having a little fun with it on the sideline, but he could develop into a player for Oklahoma. Maybe go both ways. We'll have to wait and see on that. I also think that it's a little bit of, let's not say that it's insecurity, but certainly Alex Grinch does not feel great about what he has in that secondary, particularly behind Buki, Pat Fields, DeLair, and Turner Yell. But Jaden Davis is already turning heads. There are fellas that I've been talking to that know from football that are there to look at other players for future draft picks and saying, hey, Jaden Davis could develop into one of your best corners, if not your best corner. I got to meet Brandon Bean, Buffalo Bills GM. He was in the, the press box watching the game as were a bunch of other NFL type folks, and that was really interesting because you know that Oklahoma is going to draw those names. Neville Gallimore probably made himself some money today. He's had two forced fumbles on the season. He was the best defensive player on the field for either team today, along with Kenneth Murray Jr. In this defense, he's just allowed to go after people. He's no longer thinking about it. He's making the plays. And when they got him on third down situations in that pass rush situation where he could just go kill a quarterback, you saw him wreaking havoc for tackles and he got home one time and it was kind of cool and kind of awesome but the thing that I take away most is the third down defense was outstanding we're talking about one of 12 at one point but also 0 for 8 in their first opportunities on third down that's ridiculous Oklahoma hasn't done that in recent years and now back to back stops you're getting off the field you're getting the offense the ball back and you're allowing them to let to go do what they know how to do now there are certainly things that we all saw that we would have liked to see clean up, but particularly when you talk about the offensive line, Adrian Ely was not able to go at right tackle. We'll see what Riley has to say about that. Seeing Bray Walker at right guard, born my heart, five-star player, an outstanding offensive lineman. Love to see him get opportunities. And that offensive line gave Jalen Hurts all friggin' day to throw the football. He was not hurried, except for maybe three, four times, took a sack. I know that, you know, you want to be perfect, but he was able to run around. He was able to keep it loose. Wide receivers were able to get free in space. Running backs were outstanding. Trey Sermon looked just 
ridiculous and awesome. And then Ramondre Stevenson late with his touchdown run. They all look pretty good, man. We're talking about perhaps the most complete game that we've seen from the defense so far. And we're talking about still not actually reaching the peak potential of what this offense could be. So as we continue to talk about this, yes, the nine penalties for 112 yards, probably a little bit more. But I really am not that discouraged by those penalties. And I'm not just discouraged by what they did, particularly like the pass interference call that was called early on CD. Lincoln Riley was losing his mind because, hey, man, what are we doing with this? I understand some of the stuff you want to get seen cleaned up, but watching Oklahoma open as it does against a big 12 foe makes you feel good, and they're going to have to continue to play this way if they want to compete for a national championship. I thought it was interesting that from the Red Raiders' perspective, Jackson Tiener got the start. When I'm going all along, Jed Duffy is the better option, and you saw how he was the better option. First, Jackson Tiener throws footballs like baby giraffes trying to learn to walk. Just what a good look. Looked like you were just putting out a dude out there that looks good as opposed to can play well. And Jet Duffy comes in there and he gets you going side to side. He forces you to tackle in space. He exposes your weaknesses in speed at various aspects of the defense. Brian Asamoah was flat caught out of his gap. He didn't know where he was supposed to fit, where he was supposed to feel, where he was supposed to fill. And we're talking about a defense that looked lost when Kenneth Murray Jr. was not on the field, which goes again along with what I've been saying, which is Kenneth Murray Jr. is the heart and soul of this defense and he could end up being the best player on this defense. That said, Parnell Motley has been playing out of his mind through four games. He's been absolutely outstanding, just trumming downhill to make plays. He nearly had a pick earlier in the first half. You're getting great cornerback play. You get If you get better safety play, you're looking at a top 50 defense full stop. They've been outstanding on third downs. They just got to get people to third downs, try to keep the explosive plays off because the thing that I wanted to see them do well that they didn't was disengage from the block and go make a play because as long as they're still engaged, they're going to get off those big runs. I mean, we're, we're looking at over 150 yards rushing for Texas Tech, right? And most of that was off the strength of whatever Duffy could do. And then you saw running backs kind of running wild. I mean, we're talking about 12 carries for Thompson at what? Not 100, what? 91 yards, nearly 100 yards rushing. So things to clean up on both sides of the ball, but absolutely a great win. That's it for me.